Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. We hope that we are on here live. We have a, a technical issue, so we're trying to work it out. Okay. Now, good morning. We're going to, I'm Nancy. Welcome to Cooking with Nancy O. This is my husband, Rick. I hope you guys are having a great morning. It's been a fun morning for us. We have been hopping since about seven o'clock getting this recipe ready. Today's recipe is um, a little involved. And the first thing I'm going to say is before you start making it, get all your ingredients out because that's going to make it go really smooth. So I picture this on a Sunday when you're at home watching a football game and you just have some time because the longest time it takes is cooking our squash. And what we're doing today is we are digging into some acorn squash and we're gonna make a soup out of it. You can see our display here of all the yummy things that came off the tower. We had a bumper crop of squash, pumpkin, zucchinis, acorn squash, spaghetti squash. What am I missing, Rick? All kinds of things. Um, we even grew pumpkins with, they're called warty pumpkins. They got little warts all over them. We just did fantastic with this outside this year. So we just, we actually ended up with 12 squash. A squirrel got one. And we have three more out there still growing. And it has plenty of time to grow because on our towers, you get 30% um, higher yield and three times faster growing. So we have a pumpkin that started about a month ago. I guarantee he will go full term because he, they grow faster on the towers. So we're going to get into what we did with our squash. I, um, oh, first I need to list the ingredients that came off the tower. So we got the acorn squash. We're going to have sage in the recipe. We are going to have... Um, time in there and then anything else that came off the tower i don't think just, so uh, it, yeah just and the squash okay got that all covered now we're going to move our plate so i can start getting into yeah you take it that's really heavy i loaded that baby up because it was so beautiful okay so what we did first thing this morning is we took our squash and we cut it in half and when you just take all the it's like a pumpkin if you've ever cut a pumpkin pull all the stuff out, discard it. You can uh, roast the seeds if you want, that's fine. But um, just, we drizzled some um, olive oil on top, threw it in a 400 degree oven for about 40, 45 minutes, depending on how large the squash are, how long it takes to grow, I mean, to uh, bake. After that, we pulled it out and let it cool. So that's just something you can do when you're showering in the morning, getting the kids ready, whatever you're doing. That is the longest part of this recipe. In order to get things going a little quicker for this morning, we then, in our stock pot, you're gonna take a Dutch oven. Um, you are going to uh, put in, it was a teaspoon, a tablespoon of olive oil and a tablespoon of butter. I got it good and hot. We added the carrots and a shallot, which is an onion and it's not as strong, which I'm really liking these shallots because I don't like real strong onions. So, and then some salt and pepper, and we cooked that until it was caramelized. And Rick is back there at the stove now. We are going to um, show you what the inside of the pot looks like because when you caramelize it, you're gonna have all these good little bits in there. Now our recipe that we found said to do this for eight minutes. We did not cook it for eight minutes. The first batch we did, we cut our batch in half, by the way. So if it looks like a small batch, we cut it in half. So we did not, we only cooked it about, I think six minutes, wasn't it, Rick? Yeah. Okay, so now we got the uh, carrots and the onions all caramelized and you got all those good little bits in the bottom of the pot. You want those for flavor. Cause we're gonna add a half a cup of, um, we're using vegetable stock. You can use chicken stock, whatever you like. So we're gonna throw in a half a cup of the chicken stock. And at this time, we're adding the garlic in. And um, I think the squash goes in also. We're going to cook this. Um, let me, I have to look at this recipe is a little about. We're also adding a tablespoon of honey because it's just gonna get, and 
For the big recipe, it's a two tablespoons for the whole pot. So it's not a lot of sugar. I'm doing a no sugar. I don't want to eat sugar anymore. And But this I would eat because that sugar is distributed amongst, you know, several bowls. So, okay, you ready? Rick had scraped out the bowl and got all the squash out. So I'm going to give that to him. I know it's a little hard to get that honey out, isn't it? So we did some of the pre-cooking ahead of time because of time. You guys don't want to be on here all morning. So he's going to cook that. And when it's good and fragrant, which takes about 30 seconds, then we're going to add some thyme and a bay leaf. Now, you take your thyme and you bundle it and tie it. Because when this is done, you're going to pull that out, but you have your flavor in there, which is going to be so delicious. Look at him stirring that up. That is so great. And at the same time you add the thyme, we're going to add a bay leaf in there, which then will come back out later. But you see all these wonderful flavors that are going into this. And this is a good, healthy recipe. You're not adding creams and things like that. Are you ready? Okay. I'm giving him the thyme and the bay leaf. And at this time, yep, add that. We're going to add uh, the rest of the chicken stock, uh, well, vegetable stock we're using. So go ahead and add that. And then he's going to cook that for about 15 minutes. So while that's sitting there, I want to talk to you about something else while he's cooking that. We do have some pre-made, so you don't have to wait 15 minutes for it. Um, I took some sage. So the recipe called for a crispy sage on top. And you can do this or you can just bypass this. But I love sage. When I was growing up on Thanksgiving, my mom put a lot of sage in our dressing because my dad loved sage. And the more sage, the happier he was. So you put a lot of sage in, right? So what I did is I heated some oil, about an eighth of an inch, got it good and hot, and you put the leaves in. You cook them on one side, hurry up and flip them, cook them on the other side. This is called flash dry, uh, flash frying. You pull them out. I had them on paper um, towel, and then I sprinkled them with some kosher salt. So you can see this is one. This one's good and crisp. They break right in half. And this is going to top your uh, soup when you're done. So, Rick, how is the extra soup going? Extra done. Okay, so Rick is back there cooking that. That's going to take a full 15 minutes. When that's done, we're going to sprinkle some Parmesan cheese in it, uh, some nutmeg, and some rub sage. This is getting really good for me because I love this sage. And uh, was that it, Rick? Yeah, okay. I think at that point, oh. pull the bay leaf out. Oh, yeah. So when this is done, he's going to pull that bay leaf out. He's going to pull the thyme out and he's gonna puree this in uh, the blender. So then you have a nice smooth soup to eat and that's when he's gonna to top it. And I just think this is a fantastic recipe. Rick has already snitched a taste of it to make sure the flavors were good because we split the recipe in half so we would have some ready so we could taste it while the rest is cooking. So Rick, yes. how are we doing? You ready to bring it back over? Yeah. I'm ready for you. Yeah, I even have a little bowl here for you. Is it good and hot? It is hot. Okay. So we're going to try this pot while we're keeping an eye on the other pot. I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to just turn this pot down. Okay. It's a really boiling back there and we're up here talking. So now we have already added the Parmesan cheese. We've added nutmeg to this and salt and pepper. And now... We're using a little mini bowl. I'm going to put a little piece of um, sage on. I'm going to actually break it up because it's it's flesh uh, fried. And that might add a little bit of flavor like, or, oh, look at that. You see that? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to show it. I guess I could have used a larger bowl, but here is, you get a little sage on there. Are you ready to taste it? With, you didn't taste it with the sage before. No, okay. Ready to go. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm excited about this recipe having sage in it. That's, that's really good. It's really excellent. good. Yeah. It, all right. I'm going to try it because I would. Sage on top helps out a lot. It gives it a little extra. Ooh. Yeah. 
This is a really warm, homey taste to it. With oh, that was so good. Tastes like a fall, fall soup. Like a fall soup, right? Okay. Now the best thing about this soup is it'll stay in the uh, refrigerator for four days. You can freeze it for up to I think it was four months. It said so you could make it. You can make a double batch. You could stick just section it off, put it in the freezer. You come home from work. If you have a food sealer, we love using our food sealer. You can seal it up and just put it in a boiling uh, water and you have a nice warm um, soup. And if you want, you can have a side salad with it. I guess I should have made a side salad to show with it. Yeah. That was good. That was very good. So you can see how this is such a great recipe. So what's going to make it easier for you to make is to first get all your ingredients together and get everything cut up and ready to go. And then you will know everything will go real quick when you're, you're making it. It's about the prep time. So, and that'll go really fast for you. You could even cook the squash the night before you're going to use it, cut it, take it out of the shell and put it in the fridge and then you're ready to go. Yeah. And if you're not ready to cook it, put this, um, the um, cooked squash in the freezer. When you're ready to make the soup, pull it out of the freezer. Yeah. It just has some great ideas. Yeah. And like I said, everything off the tower garden, all the main stuff. So the tower garden, we thought we were going to start taking them down like two weeks ago. They're still producing. We have zucchini still growing. We have tomatoes coming like crazy. And it has been a joy this year. I absolutely love pumpkins. I, I dreamt of having a pumpkin patch. Now I can have a pumpkin patch with my tower. It makes me so excited to see all the beautiful things that we can grow. And I use them for centerpieces before I cook them. And I'm just having a blast with this. So I hope that you guys really embrace this recipe. It's a little bit more involved, but it's worth every taste. It is a wonderful alternative to something that's full of creams and fattening and just try it out. Let me know how you like it. It's so healthy for you. Um, anything else you got for him, Rick? Um, I, I think that's about it. I think this has yep. been a wonderful thing. We um, have really enjoyed sharing this recipe with you. Guys, don't forget to crisp the sage on the recipe. If you need a copy of the, the recipe, reach out. I'll just send it through Messenger and you can have it. And then and next week, uh, oh, I know what we, we have kebabs next week and we're going to twist we're it. Not, we're not, what, yes, right. we're going to have kebabs next okay. week and we're going to put some fall vegetables on it for you. So look forward to that. And we will be moving till Tuesday next week because we're going to be at a festival. So until next week, you guys have a wonderful, wonderful week and weekend. And we will see you then. Bye for now. Bye. Oh, this was so good. It was really good. Oh, my gosh. I have to have another taste. Oh, this is perfect. like, um, I don't know. I, it is. I can see. It's got the it's thick like pea soup, but it's. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my okay. gosh, we're gonna. Yep. Oh, I love this. We'll serve it for Thanksgiving. Ooh, we have good. so many. Yeah. Okay. That sounds.